credit cards normally have such a bad reputation and people just think that they're the worst thing that you should avoid having them and yeah that's just not the case i wanted to do a quick video and explain to you how i've used credit cards to actually help me get out of debt what yeah so let's make a quick coffee and then have a chat Using credit, utilizing credit cards. So using credit cards has been one of my best ways to get out of debt. Now there are two types of credit cards that I've been using. One is a points card and the second is a balance transfer card. So with a points card, essentially you build points for every pound or dollar you spend on the credit card. Now these points, are usually, depending on the credit card, can be used for different things and can get you money off of other things. So let's talk about how I use those. Now, for me, I have two points cards. Usually you want to pick one as your main points card. Now for me currently, the American Express card is my number one points card, which means essentially I try to use that one as much as possible. So the way you want to use a points card is to use it for everyday spend. Now, when I go to Sainsbury's, to Tesco, to Ikea, to coffee shops, anywhere I go, Amazon, anything, I've linked my American Express card and just use, your, just use it as a debit card, essentially. However, make sure you pay it off in full every single month before the deadline. Fees tend to be really steep for these credit cards, so only use them if you can actually stick to using them as a debit card. You're not using them as a line of credit, so whatever you can spend, if your budget is £500, £1,000 that month, do not use more than that on your credit card because that's how you get into debt more. You have to be more sensible with these cards. And then you'll make maximum benefit without falling into the trap that a lot of people fall into with credit cards. Now, because American Express is my main card, I also have a secondary points card. That's because American Express is not accepted in every store. So quite often you'll go to a shop and it'll say American Express not accepted. Because of that, I have a second points card with MBNA. With them, it used to be a points card where you got miles with Emirates Airline. So I actually used to, before I got my American Express, I used to use that as my main card. And when I went to Thailand last year, I got 150 pound off of my return flights to Thailand just from using that card. Now that is awesome. Like literally just from using the credit card, I got 150 pound off my flight. At the moment it's a cashback card, but I just use it as a fallback credit card. So if I can't pay for something with my Amex, I use my MBNA. So the second card I mentioned was a 0% balance transfer card. The way I've used that is essentially to consolidate my other credit cards and to stop paying interest. Interest on credit cards and loans tends to be ridiculous and especially on credit cards. So if, you're, if you've got credit cards where you're paying loads of interest, look for a balance transfer credit card, preferably one that also doesn't charge you a fee for the balance transfer but those might be a bit harder to get accepted for, so just use one with the lowest transfer fee. Now, usually these shouldn't be more than 3%, so I don't recommend going for one that's higher than 3 And that way, all you pay is that 3% fee, and then for the rest of the time, you don't pay any interest. Of course, you need to be careful and monitor when your interest-free period runs out. So for example, the most common one tends to be about 18 months interest-free, and all you need to do is pay the minimum payments. So the same as with the previous one where you pay off in full every month. With this one, just make sure you're paying off the minimum. Just set up a direct debit, pay off the minimum every month, and then just make sure you set reminders on your phone that you check your balance. You know, make sure that you are paying off in full whenever the balance comes to zero or move it to another 0% card. So obviously don't use this as like stay in debt for everything but use it as a way to at least give you some breathing space and not have to use that money to pay interest but use it to pay off the capital and what you owe. Now the one I've been using is Barclay Card and I've been with them for like two years I think now interest free and every so often they give me a new offer 
which is like, we'll do you a money transfer or a balance transfer at 0% uh, for this many years. So <laughs> currently I have three balances on the Barclay card, which are 0%, but over the next few months, each of the 0% offers comes to an end. So I'm either going to look to move them to another credit card or just pay them off. That basically just depends on whether I can find a card that I like, that's cheap to move to. And also bear in mind that every credit check affects your credit rating. So don't just keep applying for cards, getting rejected and things like that, because then your credit rating will be absolutely trashed. If you've got a good credit rating, despite being in debt, find one, do the pre-checks, you know, people like money saving expert and that, um, money supermarket, things like that. They all have like pre-checks that you can do before an actual credit check is run. So essentially what I've done is I've used the money that I was using to pay off interest to pay off my loan, which has currently an 8% interest, but previously it had more when I first moved to that 0% card. So whatever you're saving in interest by moving this to the 0% card, whatever you were paying previously, use that to pay off the balances and overpay on any other debt you might have that's highest interest. Then once you've paid off those debts, start paying off the 0%. Now, I know it might be tempting to just keep the 0% because it's 0%, but it's still debt. It still counts towards your credit rating. It's still something that you have to think about in terms of like, I owe money to someone or something or an institution or whatever. So once you've prioritized the interest bearing debt, just put more money, just overpay. I'm not saying, you know, if you had 700 pound a month that you were paying off in debt and you've suddenly paid it off, that you just put 700 pound a month, but maybe 500 pound a month you know, and have that 200 as a treat to yourself to save money or invest money or whatever it is you want to do as a congratulations for paying off the debt. But don't just say I've got an extra 700 pound, I'm just gonna blow it all now. The final point I wanna reiterate is only do this if you have the discipline to actually pay these cards off when they need to be paid off and that you're not gonna use them as a source of credit, but use them as a way to gain points. If you've got any questions about the cards, especially if you're in the UK, I might not be able to help as much if you're somewhere else, but if you're in the UK and you've got any questions about these cards, how I've used them, anything like that, just comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'm so passionate about helping people get out of debt and save money for their future. I really wanna help you. I genuinely get like such joy from people saying that I've helped them. I got an email recently from a girl who I helped over a year ago with my budget spreadsheet and it just warmed my heart to see that she was still using the spreadsheet and that it had helped her save loads of money. So that's basically why I made this channel. So if you want to get out of debt, become financially independent, just save loads of money or just be smarter with your money, please subscribe and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if it has helped you at all so I know what kind of content people like and to help it reach more people. Good luck, all the best and see you in the next video.